Hi to all. Today we will discuss how to draw a hypocycloid. I took one textbook question here. Before doing this, first let us take what is hypocycloid. Hypocycloid means it is path of one p point. This p point is on the circumference of the smaller circle. Okay. When the smaller circle is rotating inside a bigger circle. Okay. Let us take one example. I took one bigger circle here. Okay. And then I took one smaller circle. I have marked one p point here. Okay, which is let us assume on the circumference of the circle. Okay, let us take, take here. Okay, now this circle is rotating inside a bigger circle like this. Okay, it is moving with this with the help of the direction of the bigger circle. Okay, now here hypocycloid means it is a path traced out by this p point. Let us assume p point is initially here. Okay, here I am marking this is a p point initially. Okay, now when it is rotating like this. This P point is coming here. I will mark here. I will take bigger one so that it is visible. And then it is rotating here. Mark this P point here. Trace of this P point. Okay. This move this circle and then mark here. So this circle is making one rotation, complete rotation. Okay. These are the P points. This is the starting P point. This is the end point. If you join all the P points, this path of the P point. So starting point to end point we got one curve. Is it visible? Okay. So this path is known as hypocycloid. Okay. So how to define hypocycloid means a hypocycloid is a curve traced out by a point on the circumference of the circle which rolls along the another circle and inside it. Okay, it is moving inside this bigger arc without slipping. Okay, without any slipping it is moving it is making one complete rotation okay this arc is called this path is called hypocycloid so here it is doing one complete rotation of the smaller circle it, okay. here we have to do one hypocycloid okay so the smaller diameter of the circle is 50 mm I have written with small d it is 5 cm and then which roll inside a circle of diameter 180 mm bigger circle diameter is capital D 180 mm that is 18 cm for one revolution also draw a tangent and normal to the hypocycloid at a point 50 mm from the center of the directing circle always remember directing circle means bigger circle okay so this is a given data first we do the hypocycloid after that we do the tangent and normal to this curve okay. here if you do the diagram rough diagram the bigger circle is like this okay what is the diameter here 180 mm or 18 centimeter what is the radius of it 9 centimeter i am taking it is capital r this 9 centimeter what is a smaller radius here 5 centimeter means half in it 2.5 centimeters okay so first we need to do the bigger circle for doing this arc we have to find one center we have to take any point on the center take the bigger arc r is equal to how much radius is 9 centimeter do the arc here for complete one rotation of the circle so this is a smaller circle it is rotating like this okay so here we have one formula for making one complete rotation how much length it is traveling in, in terms of angle so this formula is we are taking this angle 360 degrees into small d by capital D okay 360 degrees into what is the smaller diameter 50 mm what is the bigger diameter 180 mm so this is 100 degrees okay. so this first do this line and take 100 degrees and do this line of the same radius do this bigger arc okay let us do this diagram here by using the instruments first mark any point as a center let us do the hypocycloid by using the instruments initially we have to take one center any point taking this is the center okay o is the center now take the bigger radius do any one line here okay how much length it is 9 centimeter so 9 centimeter take one line mark this point is p point okay. now here after that take 100 degrees here with this reference line take 100 degrees so here 80 90 this is a 100 join center to this point this length is 9 centimeter
this is the 9 cm just join with the center make it dark here now take this is the Q point this is the starting point this is the end point okay and make an arc here with the help of compass take O as center O P as radius do an arc here which is joining P and Q here after getting this arc here do one smaller circle what is the smaller circle diameter it is 5 cm so initially mark here on it the diameter is 5 cm and mark the middle point also 2.5 so this is the diameter of the bigger circle now this is the center take this is C point now after getting C point take C as center CP radius do a circle C as center CP radius do one circle here So after getting this circle, divide this circle into 12 equal divisions. Okay. For any circle at the center angle is 360 degrees. Okay. So divide this 360 degrees into 12 divisions. So 360 de degrees divided by 12. Each part is 30 degrees. Okay. So by using the protractor, take 30, 30 degrees points. So this is this diameter is a reference one. From here I am taking 30 degrees. 30 plus 30 again 60 degrees at 160 degrees on part 60 plus 13 is 90 90 plus 13 is 120 120 plus 13 is 150 okay here we got the points join all these points to the center within the circle i'm joining this point to center so this point to center and extend this line this here i have extended this line Okay, as we know circle is symmetrical about any diameter okay this diameter now take this point join to center do the line within the circle now this point this point is now we have divided into 12 equal divisions after getting the divisions give the points here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This P point I am giving as 12 also. Okay. After dividing into 12 parts, divide this 100 degrees angle that is this arc into 12 divisions. So how to divide 100 degrees into 12 divisions? 100 divided by 12. So do with Kelsey. So we are getting 8.333 like that. So 8 degrees we can mark by using the protractor. Okay, 8 degrees we can mark. So this is 5, 6, 7, 8. But 8.3 how can we mark? So here we have to mark 8.3, 8.3 like that, 12 divisions. So I am using trial and error method for dividing into 12 divisions. So in trial and error method, first initially mark 8. After 8, uh, you have to mark approximately 1 point. Okay. Mark the angle initially by using pencil. Take so initially mark 8 degrees this is 5 6 7 8 after 8 i am taking little distance i am marking one point approximately i am taking okay after 8 one point so join this point to this point by using the pencil you have to do it so this point to center you join and extend up to this arc bigger arc so take this length this this is a p point and this is a angle we are taking so take that angle by using the compass take this angle by using the compass just mark here already we did one one part and this is a second one this is a third part this one is a fourth one this is a fifth part sixth part seventh one eighth one ninth one tenth one eleventh one here we got uh, only 11 parts but we have to divide into 12 divisions whatever radius we are taking just reduce it reduce the length between these two points and again redraw these arcs remove these arcs for initially okay instead of the big previous one take the smaller radius okay so 
So in trial and error method, first remove these arcs. Now what I did, instead of previous radius, I took smaller than that one. Okay, again I am marking this is the first part. This is the second part. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. Fifth one. Sixth one. Seventh one. Eighth one. Ninth one. Tenth one. Eleventh one. We got twelfth one. Okay. So exactly we have divided this into twelve equal divisions. So this is this method is called trial and error method. So here whatever intersection points are coming, give the names. One this is the first point, one dash. This is the second one, two dash, three dash, four dash, five dash, six dash, seven dash, eight dash, nine dash, ten dash, eleven dash. This Q point I am giving twelve dash. Okay, after getting these points, so join all these points to center with the help of step. Seeing eyes of mine you see, there are no trees inside of me. In this sense that I can look at you with love. Seeing all that I can know, can you stay and I will grow. After joining all the points to the center, as I told, this circle is rotating inside it, okay, inside the bigger arc. So center is also moving, okay. So it is parallel to this main curve, and all the points are also moving, okay. That's why we had to shift all these points on the arc. So here I am taking initially this is the center for all the points. So I will do at the center one arc. So take OC is the radius, O as center. Just do an arc here, like this. So all centers are moving on this arc. Okay. Now similarly, I am taking the last point, O as center, O6 is the radius. So this sixth last end point will move on this end curve. This early at all the points do the arc with O as center. O as center. O1 is the radius. 11 and 1 are coming on the same arc. So this is the first arc. This is the 11 1 arc. Take O as center. O2 as radius. Do an arc which is passing through 10 and 2. So do an arc here. Next radius is 0, 3. O as center. Next radius is O3. So which is passing through. Next radius is O3. So which is passing through 9, 3. Next is O4. Now 4 and 8 are moving on the same arc. And so next is O5. 7 and 5 are on the coming on the same arc. So like that, we did arcs at all the points. So after getting all the arcs, our main aim is we need to trace out this P point. Okay, P point is initially here. So it is moving like this, from one center to another center. Okay, so here we need to mark the centers initially. So on the center arc, this is the center arc which is passing through C. So I am taking the first, so from C to C1 center I am taking, C1 center is on the first line. Okay, C1, mark C1. And then center 2 is on the second line, C2. And then third line C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, C8, C9, C10, C11 and this is the C12. Okay. So centers are moving. We need to draw the path of P point. When center is moving from C to C1, where the P point is? But the center to P point distance is same because same circle is moving. Now whatever radius of the smaller circle, we have to take that radius by using this compass. Take the radius of the smaller circle. Okay. Initially P point is here. Okay. Now when it is shifting to C1, 
just do a arc on the first line it is moving from p to p1 again from c to second line we have to do the arc which is passing through to second arc okay p2 so initially p it is it is moving here again it is moving here again c3 center on the third line which is passing through three arc okay c4 center on the fourth where it is on the fourth arc and then c5 c5 to fifth one so this is passing through fifth and c6 to sixth one so it is here so from sixth okay c7 to seventh one seven five on the fifth one c8 to eighth arc so on this arc so c9 to ninth one so nine three arc is passing on the same c10 to tenth arc this one is the tenth one so c11 to eleventh one this one is c12 to this one last so give the names of the intersection points these intersection points are we are tracing the p path so this is p1 and this is p2 this is p3 after p3 this is a p4 and this is p5 and this arc is p6 p7 p8 this is p9 p10 p11 p12 okay if we join all the p points we are getting the hypocycloid join all the p points with the freehand curve So this path is called hypocycloid. Make it dark. This curve is called hypocycloid. For this curve, we have to draw a tangent and normal okay, at a point 5 cm from the center of the directing circle. Already I told directing circle means it is a bigger circle. So from the we have to take 1.5 cm from the center of the directing circle. Okay. By using the compass, take 5 cm distance. Okay, this distance is from the center of the bigger circle. From the center of the bigger circle means O is a bigger circle center. From this, we have to take one point on the curve. We can take this side or this side. Okay. At this point, intersection point, I am taking this is M point. We need to draw normal and tangent. Take this radius by using compass, okay, radius of the smaller circle. So, M as center, draw an arc on the center curve, okay, which is passing through all centers. So, we got one point here. Take this point is some X point. After getting X point here, join O and X, this center to X and extend up to this curve. Join OX and extend up to this point. Okay. Take this point is the intersection point is N. Join N and M, it is a normal. Okay. Here N, this N point is N dash. N N dash is a normal. As we know, tangent is perpendicular to normal. That is 90 degrees. So take this is N N dash. So 90 degrees means here join m to this point it is a tangent so here i am giving name t t dash okay t t dash is a tangent n n dash is a normal and the angle between tangent and normal is 90 degrees and mark the given dimension the smaller circle diameter is 50 mm and the radius of the bigger circle is 90 mm and this m point is from the center it is 50 mm and mx distance is radius of the smaller circle that is 25 mm and this is the hypocycloid for epicycloid and cycloid videos also we did i will give the video link in description box please check it thank you for watching